OK. Um, so the first thing we want to do um, as we start to work with this in, uh, in Gecko, uh, first of all, I want to turn off my previous analysis just so it doesn't trigger by accident and slow things down. Um, and then I want to start basically the same way as I did before. I want to start by bringing in some of my geometry into Ecotect. So we go to Gecko uh, and we go to the Eco Mesh export node again. Uh, we'll just create one of these toggles to trigger it. And then for the mesh to import, uh, this is the case where I want to actually import two different sets of geometry. I want to import my floor geometry, which will become my analysis plane. And then as a separate import, I want to bring in all the rest of my geometry to be the stuff that kind of occludes the light or stops the light from getting into my floor. Um, so the first one I'm going to use to bring in my floor geometry. Um, so for the mesh input, I'm going to connect my mesh from floor. And again, here is the model new parameter. Um, I'm just going to create a panel. I set that to zero. In this case, I still want it to uh, create a new model every time that it imports this. Because this is my first state in my analysis, so I want to make sure that when this triggers and it brings in my floor, it creates a new model, so it deletes everything that happened before. OK, so um, if we run this now, so double click this to true, we can see that in Ecotect, it's brought in just our floor as a mesh. So everything looks pretty good. The next thing we want to do is to convert that floor mesh into an analysis grid. So you don't have to worry too much about this, but the way that Ecotech does analysis is it sets up a grid and then it calculates all the lighting based on the grid faces. So it's actually really similar to the way that this exposure uh, node works in Grasshopper. Um, it basically takes any mesh and then calculates the light based on its resolution. So to convert this floor mesh into an analysis mesh, uh, there's a tool in Gecko called um, Eco fit grid, and you can read what this does. Uh, it basically fits the analysis grid within Ecotech to the extents of the currently selected object in Ecotech. And by default, the last object brought in will be the currently selected object. And this is why the sequence of operations is important. Um, just this is why the first thing we do is create the floor, then we fit the uh, mesh to the uh, or we fit the analysis mesh to that floor, and then we bring in our other objects. Because it's really important to understand that no geometry is getting passed between these two nodes. They're just triggering each other. So once this completes, this one happens. But there's nothing here which tells us which geometry we fit the grid to. It's just the last object brought in. Okay. Uh, so the first thing we do is connect these two. Um, I'm just going to hide this for now. Um, so once this completes, I'll send a command to here, and it'll execute this fit to grid. Uh, there's a series of components that you can specify here. Uh, the grid axis will default to XY. If you want to analyze the, the walls, you might want to change this to XY or XZ. Um, the type of fit we can keep as a default. This is the resolution of our new grid. So our old mesh had a certain resolution, but the analysis grid is always going to be composed of squares. Okay, So it's going to basically create a new square mesh to fit within that floor. And it's going to be created at the resolution that we specified. To start out with, I'm going to specify 20 and create a slider. Just specify 20 for both CX and CY. This is my resolution of uh, the analysis grid. For CZ, I can keep the default at 10. And for offset, I'm going to create a panel and specify 0.9. This is the um, amount of offset that the analysis grid will take from the original floor. And this is important. Um, you need to kind of um, play around this depending on your model. It might change. But there's certain values that work better. So you don't want the actual analysis to have the right at the floor. You want some height up in the space. Um, for this model, 0.9 works pretty well. Okay, so once we have uh, all of that hooked up, uh, we can hit true. So this will execute these two operations in sequence. We go back to Ecotech, we can see what's happened. We have our original floor mesh, and it's created this analysis grid 
um, in references formats just kind of fit this grid within it. Uh, but this grid is actually the surface onto which Ecotech will do its analysis. So you can see here we have this analysis grid, no data available because we have the grid, we just haven't run any analysis on it yet. So all the values of all the mesh traces is still zero. All right, so once we have uh, that set up, we want to import the rest of our geometry into Ecotech. And we'll use the same export mesh node from before. Uh, we'll just go to uh, Eco Mesh Export. And then we'll link the D from FitGrid into here. So it's going to chain these together and execute in order. So it's not going to bring any of our other meshes in until the analysis grid has been created. OK, so for the mesh, we want to bring in our floor and our um, facade geometry. Just like before, we need to make sure that when things go into Ecotech, they're triangles. Because here we're working with these as panels, we want to keep them as quads. Um, just for our, you know, for our own design uh, reasons uh, in the model. So we're just going to convert the, everything to triangles right before we import into Ecotech. So just like before, I just created this triangulate component. I'm just going to plug in the um, facade meshes. I'm going to hold shift and plug in the uh, ceiling meshes just straight into this triangle component. I'm going to flatten everything. So now it's going to just bring in all these meshes it's going to triangulate everything and I'll put like just a straight list of triangle meshes out here and then we can plug those uh, into Ecotect. And then at this step, um, this N input becomes important because if we go to Ecotect now, you can see that it's brought in our new geometry. So we have the facade and we have the ceiling, but it's actually deleted everything we had before. And this is because this end component by default is set to model new. So every time you this triggers, it creates a new model. So now we want to um, just change that with um, just a number input. We want to change that to two. If you go here, uh, two will basically says delete nothing. So it's just going to add to the model we already have. And this is this kind of flow of the analysis that when this is true, this triggers first. It's going to create a new model, bring in the floor mesh, create the grid, and then bring in the other mesh. And every time this re-triggers, it's going to do that process. So we can, we're kind of guaranteed that nothing will get jammed up, that every time we're going to start fresh and kind of cascade down this whole, uh, this whole sequence. OK, so once that's done, we can go in here. Um, first, uh, to re-trigger the whole thing, because this only updated this node, we're just going to set this to false, and then set it to true again. It's going to rerun everything. Now we see that all of our geometry is here. We have our floor. Okay, so now we have our floor, we have our analysis grid, and we have all of our geometry of the building. 